that people can't be taught to laugh. I realized most of my life I spent time trying to make people laugh. I was pushing things. I was, I was trying to wear funny clothes. I was trying to do something out of the ordinary. But I realized it doesn't have to be that complicated. For example, think of one thing that makes you smile, makes you giggle. When's the last time you just giggled? Think of that one thing. And while you're thinking about that, I'm going to go through three, an exercise with three different words. And we're going to see if people can be taught to laugh. So, everybody got your thought? The idea that makes you giggle. It doesn't even have to be funny right now. But take that thought, and I want you to just repeat after me. The first word is ho. The second word is ha. Uh -huh. And the third word is going to be he. <laughs> okay, so the first one. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. seconds of laughter will change your mood. Let's see. <laughs> Ready and go! was that it never occurred. <laughs> there would be what was said, there would be what was meant, there would be what was understood, but rarely did it match what was intended. No more did I see this anywhere else than the difference between relationships between men and women. <laughs> so let's investigate this for just a moment. I'm going to refer back to a very brilliant preacher he said, Jeremy, it's not that communication doesn't happen. It's that we go about it the wrong way. I'm like, okay, I'm getting to live it. He said, Jeremy, we're going to, for the sake of men and women conversations, we're going to start with the fact that we have to start at two different places. We're going to call this the happy place. And we're going to call this the heart. In order to communicate with a man, oftentimes it's best to start with the happy place and then work up to the heart. In order to communicate with a woman, it's often first important to deal with the heart. To get access to the happy place. He said, if you could just understand that, that'll change your life, my friend. It was the first time I'd really had a sex conversation in church. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also one of the most important conversations I'd ever had. Because I realized that it was the piece of what I was listening for that was the most important. It wasn't what I was saying, because I could speak all day long. But if I'm speaking in Swedish, how many people are going to understand me? <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> so where is it that the rules of communication lie? Where is it that the structure for communication lies? I realized that I could take all the classes in the world on how to be a better speaker, but would that make a difference? If I'm speaking in Latin, how many people are going to understand me? <laughs> I love having an educated audience. <laughs> if 
if I'm speaking to what you care about in a language that you understand, are you likely to listen? How many people don't want to have a more prosperous relationship with their significant other? Okay, great. If you're in this game to be a powerful communicator, it's not about how you speak. I've been told, hey, it's form. It's what are their friends? What are their, what are their occupations? What are their recreations? What do they care about as far as money goes? Or, I'm like, no, it's where you're coming from. Where are you listening from? If I'm speaking to Espen, and I know that he can hear English, I'm more likely to speak English because I know that's a common ground. I can speak it, he can hear it. Let's start there. I know Tiffany is going to be much more interested in having a conversation, and I get to know her. I get to know who she is. If I'm speaking to her heart, I say, hey, I get your passion and your love. With every single person in this room, it's not so much how we speak that makes the difference. It's what lands. I had a conversation with my partner the other day. She told me, this is right after we had that conversation about cleaning the kitchen. <laughs> For those of you who weren't here, I had just cleaned the entire kitchen, and I looked over to my partner, I said, how do you like the kitchen? She said, fully stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I realized in that moment that I could be pissed or I could listen. I could be righteous and be angry that she didn't pay attention to all the sweat, blood, and tears that I'd put in in the arena of the kitchen and explicitly wanted my thank yous. <laughs> Or I could simply listen. Listening, I'd say, is where the key in communication lies. And that if we truly want to be powerful communicators, we give up that the myth of communication is about talking and start listening.